Hey everyone, I'm Paul Salter. Today, we're discussing everything you need to know about fat. Let's look back as far as 1977, when the US government first told us to follow a low-fat diet and to minimize our saturated fat. We were told this would reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, high blood pressure, and everything in between. And so began the low-fat fad and demonization of fats. Low-fat started appearing on nutrition labels and became the marketing strategy of all strategies. Place low-fat on your product and it would most certainly sell. Why buy regular water when you could just buy low-fat water? Joking aside, this practice got out of hand, yet there wasn't nearly enough supporting evidence for these claims. And throughout the next three decades, obesity, cardiovascular disease, and type 2 diabetes rates continued to rise. And this finally made lawmakers and medicine experts scratch their heads and reevaluate the claims that presided over the food industry for so long. Was fat truly to blame? Was it as bad as we once thought? Was it, perhaps, dare I say, beneficial? Alongside the exponential growth in obesity rates, rose our growth in nutrition, albeit just at a much slower pace. What we learned? Some fats heal and some fats harm. And even the subtlest nuances in the structure of that fat influences the impact it has on your health. But before we discuss the types of fats that heal and the types that harm, it's important to reiterate the many benefits dietary fat has in our body. We'll talk about that next. In this video, we're discussing the functions of fat. Dietary fat is essential. Your body needs fat. It helps with the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins and the transport of nutrients throughout your body. It helps cells throughout your body send signals and communicate with one another. It plays a role in enhancing cognitive function and preventing cognitive decline with age. And it plays a role in regulating body temperature and also cushioning your organs and your joints. Oh, and did I mention it tastes great? In their simplest form, fat molecules consist of carbon and hydrogen molecules linked together like a chain. However, how these molecules are bound, where they are bound, and which additional molecules come into play makes each fatty acid quite unique. And despite these invaluable benefits, every fat is not created equal. Some fats heal, some fats harm. Let's start with the good old healthy fats. We'll talk about those next. In this video, we're discussing unsaturated fats. Unsaturated fats have one small yet significant difference when compared to saturated fats. They have a, wait for it, double bond. And this double bond is substantial enough to have earned unsaturated fats the nickname of healthy fats. And the number of double bonds an unsaturated fat has gives way to its more technical name, monounsaturated or polyunsaturated fats. There are subtle differences in how each type impacts the body, yet both are outstandingly healthy and the differences are minor enough that we don't need to discuss them. The double bond is also distinct enough to help identify unsaturated fats as those that are typically liquid at room temperature. Unsaturated fats have been shown to possess enough awesomeness to do the following. Positively influence your cholesterol levels, positively influence blood pressure, reduce whole body inflammation, and enhance brain function. Of course, that's just the short list. The awesomeness extends down many paths and is even strong enough to even have a powerful impact on life expectancy. 
So, where can you find these coveted fats? In many tasty foods, of course. Foods high in unsaturated fats include nuts and seeds, avocados, olive and canola oil, fish, flax and chia seeds, and grass-fed animal meats. Next up, let's discuss the most controversial type of fat there is. In this video, we'll discuss saturated fats. Saturated fats can appear pretty boring if you're just looking at them. They consist of a single, straight chain of bonds amongst carbon and hydrogen atoms. Even so, their simple structure hasn't kept them from getting the attention in media and medicine. Throughout the low-fat fad, saturated fat got the worst criticism. Media and medicine experts not only cautioned against dietary fat, but specifically saturated fat. Saturated fats were blamed as the true culprit responsible for the rise in heart disease due to their supposed impact on cholesterol levels, blood pressure, and whole body inflammation. And so was coined the nickname of unhealthy fats. Fortunately, research methods and open-mindedness finally caught up to these claims. New research, as well as studies that re-evaluated previous research, soon debunked many false statements and found some of these claims to be not nearly as drastic as once believed. Assessment even showed that some saturated fat was more neutral than bad, and even beneficial in some regards. Saturated fat plays a crucial role in cell structure, cell communication, and cell signaling. It also plays a role in organ cushioning, as well as hormone and vitamin production. Most notably, they play a role in the production of testosterone and help to convert heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids into their usable form. But more on omega-3s in a bit. Saturated fats are commonly found in those sources of fat that are solid at room temperature. Examples include animal meats, butter, dairy products, and coconut and coconut oil. The main takeaway of this video, don't write off saturated fats. They need not to be avoided. The fat that actually needs to be avoided, I'll talk about that next. In this video, we'll discuss trans fats. If there's ever a time that the phrase, avoid it like the plague, is appropriate in the nutrition realm, it should concern trans fats. Trans fats are very similar in structure to unsaturated fats, yet the impact on your health is vastly different. The difference lies in the structure of the double bond and how the hydrogen bonds are positioned. Trans fats are pro-inflammatory. They raise bad cholesterol, reduce good cholesterol, and eating them is associated with a greater risk for obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. Trans fats increase the shelf life and stability of processed foods. They also help such foods retain their proper taste and texture. The major source of trans fats is partially hydrogenated oil, but they're also found in processed foods such as cookies, cakes, donuts, baked goods, pizza, and spreads. Small amounts of trans fats are also found naturally in beef and dairy products. Federal regulation has cracked down hard on the use of trans fat in foods today. But despite this, trans fats still remain prevalent in many foods. If you see partially hydrogenated oil on an ingredients list, you're better off leaving that item on the shelf. Next, let's return to the good fats and discuss the ones that are essential. <music> In 
In this video, we'll discuss the essential fats. There are certain fats that your body cannot make and therefore must obtain from food or supplementation. These are referred to as essential fats. Both omega-3 and omega-6 fats are essential, unsaturated fats. So, what makes them profoundly different? The location of a double bond. Omega-3 fats are also referred to as heart-healthy fats because of their anti-inflammatory properties and the positive health benefits they exert within the body. Some of the purported benefits include having a positive impact on total and individual cholesterol, a positive impact on body composition, enhanced insulin sensitivity, and enhanced brain function. Omega-6 fats, on the other hand, are pro-inflammatory and may have a negative impact on blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and your body composition. As I mentioned earlier, both types of omega fats are essential. What's important, however, is the omega-6 to 3 ratio. The typical American diet provides a ratio of 12 or even 20 to 1 between omega-6 and omega-3 fats. This means the typical diet contains many more foods that are high in omega-6 fats compared to omega-3 fats. This greatly exceeds the recommended 5 to 1 ratio by many health professionals. So, how do you work towards this desirable ratio? By eating more foods rich in omega-3 fats, of course. Sources include fatty fish, such as salmon and mackerel, flax and chia seeds, walnuts, fish oil, soybeans, and even spinach. Sources of omega-6 fats include breads, cereals, vegetable oils, some nuts and seeds, baked goods, butter, fatty cuts of beef, and chicken. Sure, some of these foods should be limited, such as the low-quality proteins and trans-fat-filled options. But some of these sources should still be eaten regularly, especially the high-fiber good stuff. Next, I want to further explore the heart-healthy benefits of omega-3 fats.